Hey everyone, James Haglin here, and we're another episode of Who Are They? And we've met David Fletcher before, but here he is again to talk to us, talk with us about his experience in refinancing. So David, one of the questions I I get asked is is why? So why did you refinance? Well, it just made sense from a, from a dollars and cents perspective. Uh, as I mentioned last time we chatted, I, I very much like to dive into the numbers of things and understand where the money's coming from and where the money's going. And when I was looking at what I was paying on a, on a monthly basis, I had some PMI in there because I, I didn't quite have enough to make that 20% when I made my initial, uh, my initial purchase. So that was like 70, 80 bucks a month that was just going away. And I, I could pay it, but you know, why pay 70, 80 bucks a month if you don't have to? Uh, and then in addition to that, the, the value of my home had gone up to where I didn't need additional capital to, you know, to make, to cut down that principal balance and, and get it below that 20% mark anymore. Uh, and it just made sense. You know, it lowered my monthly payment, not just by that 70 or $80, but by a couple of hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, at the end of it all, once I was done refinancing, my my monthly mortgage payment was less than what I had paid in rent since 2013. Mm -hmm. so, so we go into the results. So your results were, or your goal was to lower your payment and also remove the, the premium mortgage insurance when you initially bought the home. Then you've, you accomplished those results correctly. That, I mean, that that's what happened, right? <laughs> A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Like I am, I am not leaving my home anytime soon because mm -hmm. the payment is on my mortgage is just comparatively so low. And granted, that was a very different rate environment. You know, that was back when we had those those magical twos and threes showing up. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was just fantastic. Um, but yeah, it's it's a very comfortable payment, and it gives me a lot of confidence in you know in my monthly expenses when. Mm -hmm. I think about things that, that keep me up at night as far as budgeting and expenses goes. My housing payment isn't one of them. So we talk about your the results of saving the money and removing the, the mortgage insurance. Did you then allocate those funds into another investment or another type of investment? Well, for that stage of my life, uh, financially, it was a lot about just cutting down expenses as much as possible mm -hmm. to getting closer to a, a comfortable lifestyle. Uh, and I don't mean comfortable like, you know, caviar and fancy cars or anything like that, right. but more of not being in a paycheck to paycheck situation. Uh, a little bit of history prior to buying a home, um, my wife and I had, had been working together or had, had both been working our careers, uh, making decent enough money and, and we were we were doing fine. You know, we had car payments and we had rent and all that stuff, but it was okay. You know, we were young and just a, a newly married couple, so everything was great. But then we started having kids. And uh, after the first kid, my, my wife, uh, she, she wasn't able to go to work anymore. So she stayed home with the kids. So all of a sudden, and overnight, my uh, our, our household income was cut in half. And and it became difficult to, you know, to to continue to, to have, well, really any lifestyle at that point. You know, you start clipping coupons real quick and you, you have to try and trim as much stuff out of your budget as you as you possibly can. You know, cancel all our Hulus and Netflix and Amazons and all those things. No gym memberships, none of that. We're eating peanut butter and jelly three meals a weekend. Um, I mean, not really. It didn't get that bad. Right. But we kept Netflix. We kept had to have the PB and J, but we kept the Netflix um, priorities. <laughs> but the uh, but yeah, after. So after getting the home, like it was a lot about just what else can we do to to cut down our expenses even and to move us from a, a paycheck to paycheck situation where, you know, we're clipping coupons and chasing deals and and uh, and severely limiting what we do to where we can feel like we live a normal life, and have have normal life things like not eating out all the time, but maybe every once in a while have a date night, you know, once once every week or so, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and not eat fancy, but you know, not have to go to McDonald's if we're gonna have a dinner right. or something. Be <laughs> able to take the kids out to do something. <laughs> exactly. Another piece being, you know, what what if I would have lost my job, you know, mm -hmm. or uh, some type of impact to my income, um, being the only income in the household. If, uh, if something happened to reduce the amount that I was making on a monthly basis, then you know, we could have quickly found, our, found ourselves dramatically underwater. Uh, and mm -hmm. that's not a 
very comfortable place to be. So, you know, right. reducing our obligations, paying off debt was a big goal for uh, for the refinance. We didn't cash out any of the equity in the home to uh, to pay off any debt, but with the extra income that we that we were able to, you know, not have going towards that monthly payment, we just started putting that directly into you know student loans, car payment. Uh, things like that, getting all that paid off. So your, what was the difference as far as your experience went with purchasing a home versus refinancing? Refinance, so purchasing the home was collect all the paperwork, do all these things, circle back around, we need more information, circle back around, we need more information, circle back around, we need more information. Mm -hmm. Oh shoot, send an email fast because it's due in 24 hours and congratulations, you're home. You know, it was several weeks of of, of different things to, to that all had very strict timelines and all this stuff to get it done. Um, but refinancing, I think I sent you an email and then a couple weeks later, or maybe just a week later, you were like, hey, congratulations, it's done. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, you, you've, you've been, I don't want to say brain, like it's just your brain trained on how to, you know, oh, I've done this before and it's just more of a natural thing, right? It's like, I mean, it I do it every day, right? So, <laughs> and I'm sure, I'm sure on your end of the, of the transaction, there was a lot more to it than that, but mm -hmm. how it felt for me, it was, I mean, I don't even know that we talked over the phone, I'm right. sure we did, but I can't specifically remember that conversation. It was just very... It was just very straightforward and like, oh yeah, boom, 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 boom. here you go. I mean, I right. probably had more difficulty scheduling a doctor's appointment than I did <laughs> with that transaction. Right, right. <laughs> well, thanks, David. I appreciate your time and explaining some differences on, you know, on the refinance process and why you did it and that you accomplished, we helped you accomplish what you're trying to do. And I, you know, look forward to talking to you again. <laughs> Sounds good. Always a pleasure.